Once you leave this video having an understanding of how we charge a air-cooled chiller, some of the practices, some of the things you need to pay attention to along the way. Hi, how you doing? I am Holden Schamberger. I am with HVAC Time and Chiller Academy. I specialize in chiller systems, spent a lot of years doing chiller service. We're going to talk about some of the charging procedures and practices that I've developed over time. And one of the big ones is having full ports. So make sure that you've got all restrictions removed from the process. If it's your hoses, like if what you have is quarter inch hoses for this, so be it. We can make that work. But open everything up, the quarter pressers, get them out of there. Uh, I have a dedicated set of hoses just for recovery that don't have any kind of quarter pressers or anything else involved. It's that's all they're used for. They're just full port all the way. And make sure you're using a quality set of hoses. Some of these cheaper hoses have uh, a smaller internal diameter and they'll choke down your flow a lot. So if you get a good high quality, say yellow jacket or something hose, uh, you'll know that you've got a full port and you've got full flow and you'll be able to maximize your process. In terms of machines and what I recommend for this, so there's two machines that uh, I absolutely love. One is the Appian G5 Twin. In terms of an entry-level option just to get started in this, not the cheapest pump in the world. They've gotten a lot more expensive than they used to be. But the G5 Twin is utterly incredible. It can move liquid refrigerant. and But you have to treat it carefully. You have to treat it a very specific way. Otherwise, it, it can damage itself or you know just I'd, I'd consider more user error but g5 twin is amazing the other one is a navic nrdc 4m it is a four-cylinder recovery machine that has a built-in subcooler that can be bypassed and so during a charging process it's amazing to be able to bypass your your cooler inside of the machine because then you just increase volume you increase flow and like there's no need to subcool that refrigerant or cool it down when it's getting pumped back into the system. You're not going to put that much heat into the chiller to to build any kind of pressure that's going to affect your your charging process. So they have a push pull mode on that which the push pull mode bypasses the the cooler altogether. It's super great. I got absolutely love it. Either way, those are the two machines, whichever one you would, you'd want to go with or whatever one you, you prefer. Uh, other people have them out there. Just That's my experience. Those are the two that I've done the most with. And I can absolutely stand behind them. There's, a, there's two basic configurations you could do with this, and it does make a difference which way you go. Uh, Push-pull would be one, and if you're moving a lot of refrigerant, I would recommend using push-pull uh, because it's going to cut your time in probably about half if you do this properly. So with a push-pull, you're going to have a hose coming off of a vapor port, probably your suction line, coming to your inlet of your recovery machine. You're going to go out of your recovery machine into the vapor port of your recovery cylinder. And then from your recovery cylinder, you're going to come out of that port into the uh, liquid port of your or the evaporator, you know, in some cases if you're if you're flooded, but you're gonna head to into the chiller uh, from there. And what you're doing is you're pulling out of the chiller, you're pulling gases out of the chiller, pumping it into your tank, and then using those uh, gases to push down out of the tank uh, all the liquid into the liquid port, and then back out into the machine and it, it works and it's really fast. I was very skeptical of it for a long time. I knew it existed, but it just, I got really good at direct charging. And so to do a direct charge, it's just like you do anything else. Uh, I'd come straight from my tank, my liquid port on my tank. I'd go into my um, inlet port of my recovery machine, out the inlet port into the charging port I was using, typically the liquid line. Sometimes the evaporator with an air cooled, it'll be different on water cooled. I'll do a whole separate video for this on water cooled. Uh, pump it just straight into the system. And if you don't have any restrictions, you don't have any cores in the way, no core depressors, you've, everything is full port. The If you're using any kind of ball valves for isolation, all of those are full ported. They're not like 
some of the some of the cheaper ones I've seen where they're they're not full port. They've got a smaller internal diameter. Uh, anyway, long as you've got good flow, either of those pumps will sling liquid right through it without issue. Won't even blink. And you get so uh, a push pull charge. I've done. Uh, let's see what 250 pounds of charge, I think, or 230 in what half an hour. And if I'm doing that same process via direct charge, it takes me 45 minutes to an hour. That's the kind of volume you can move when you've got a proper setup. Some of the things to be really careful of when you're charging, especially if you're charging into the evaporator make sure that you are flowing water. We have to flow water so that as the refrigerant's going in and we're below a freezing saturation, we're allowing it to build saturation pressure and get above freezing while it hits the tubes before it freezes anything. We don't, we don't want it to freeze any tubes in the evaporator. So if we flow water through the evaporator, we won't have tubes freeze and the, the, we protect the evaporator at that point. That, is, that has to be our greatest goal and priority is protect that evaporator. Now, if we're charging in, into the liquid side of the system and that liquid's not going to get into the evaporator, then, then we'll be fine. Like If you're not able to flow water at that point, it's not that big a deal. Now, one of the things you can do is you can pre-charge the chiller with vapor just to get above freezing saturation internally and then start to do your liquid charge. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that practice. Uh, people have done that for a long time in order to prevent having any kind of issues on the evaporator or freezing tubes and just not even taking the risk. Now, let's say you've got a situation where you didn't do the recovery, you but you're short on charge and you need to replenish. Well, then something like a push-pull, unless you ordered refrigerant in large volume quantity where you got it in the 120-pound uh, cylinders or, or bigger, you know, where you've got tank adapters and, you know, you're able to do, you know, you've got two ports, a liquid and a, and a vapor port, unless you've got that, which a lot of times we don't. When we're trying to just replenish a lost charge, we've got a standard charging cylinder. You're just going to do a direct charge, okay? And if you've got a blended refrigerant, you're just going to flip it over just like you would do anything else. The, the big critical thing here is uh, being comfortable understanding how to do a liquid charge. And I think that's the big thing that separates because if you don't do a liquid charge and you try to do it some of these other methods where it's more of just a vapor charge or something um, or you're trying to slowly meter the charge, that's the other thing. You're not, if, if you are putting just a little bit of charge in, you're starting the, the chiller up and then you're um, using the compressors to suck it in the rest of the way, you're not charging the uh, chiller with the recovery machines, then you're wasting a lot of time. You don't need to do that. Just, just stop. Take the time, get comfortable with pumping liquid refrigerant with your machine and the practices behind that. And you need to get that entire charge in there before a compressor ever spins. You should not have to use the compressor suction to pull and charge, period. That's not a practice we use in the chiller side. I'm not saying that, you know, if, if if you're in a pinch and you need to get some extra charge in there to get you over the weekend or something because you've got to do repair or whatever. I mean, that that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you've, you've done a full recovery, the system's been evacuated and you need to add charge to it. Use that recovery machine to get all that charge in there. Get it in there. That way, when it goes to ready to start up and it's good, everything's good. You ain't got nothing to worry about. And that's really where things get separated in terms of where this becomes different than some other systems you may be used to is it's the volume and the scale at which we're doing this. We're doing this at great volume, you know, hundreds of pounds of refrigerant to a very large system, typically. Now, you, you could have some small air cooled you're working on, so it may not be that much bigger than a, a large RTU, but still, the, the point is just we're doing this at very large volumes and it, it to do it efficiently and effectively just takes a little bit different practices that on many other systems may not be recommended. You know, there's, there's lots of times where 
uh, you, you wouldn't necessarily do that same process on a regular split system. Uh, you could, you run the risk of possibly overcharging or otherwise. So you just have to be, you have to be, there's other considerations, but when we're dealing with these chiller side and, and we've got very specific, uh, charge volumes that we, we know what it, it's a package system. Like we, we don't, we're not, we're not having, uh, a, a unknown value here. Like everything is specifically engineered. Just follow the data. If you'd like some more training like this, go to chilleracademy.com. I've got a whole online course that you can take with you into the field, get alongside the equipment. You can do your lesson plans and help you understand chiller systems, terminology, how these things work, why they work the way they do. We go through all of that. It's chilleracademy.com. MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. Appreciate you. I'll see you around.